expert role in maneuverability. The F-14 served the U.S. Navy from 1974 to 2006 and made its combat debut in April 1975, escorting American citizens out of Saigon. The F-14's first kills would come in 1981 when the U.S. 6th Fleet took up position in the Gulf of Sidra. Colonel Muammar Gaddafi made it clear to the U.S. that to sail into my Gulf is to cross the line of death. The Libyans scrambled two Soviet-built Su-22 fighters armed with heat-seeking missiles and opened fire on the Tomcats. The F-14 showcased their superior maneuverability in dogfighting, evading all missiles, and shot the Su-22s out of the sky. Questions immediately abound as to what this meant and if Libya would go to war with the U.S. Ultimately, such was the confidence in the F-14 that President Reagan's staff would let him sleep another six hours before briefing him on the tense incident. A sense of deja vu would follow in 1989 when again off the coast of Libya, the U.S. F-14s would be met, this time, by newly commissioned MiG-23 floggers. The F-14s again turned to avoid conflict while the Libyan MiGs turned in to pursue. After a few tense moments, the F-14s met their rules of engagement and again shot both MiGs out of the sky. Ultimately, the F-14's combat record reads as follows. It shot down five aircraft in total, four Libyan fighters, and a Russian-built Iraqi Mi-8 helicopter. It suffered zero losses in air-to-air -air combat and one loss due to ground fire. The Phoenix missile would account for none of those kills. In fact, in its entire U.S. Navy history, the vaunted Phoenix was only ever fired a handful of times, mostly ending in rocket motor failures and zero kills. But before we dive into those numbers, you might have noticed that we said U.S. F-14s. And well, that's because one other country was flying them too, the Iranians. Now that might sound hard to believe given the current political climate, but the Shahs of Iran were friendly to the U.S., and it wasn't until the rise of Ayatollah Khomeini in 1979 when everything changed. During the Iran-Iraq War, Iranian F-14s accounted for 130 air-to-air -air kills, suffered four air-to-air -air losses, and four ground losses. The most decorated F-14 pilot isn't even American. He's Iranian pilot Jalil Zandi, with 11 confirmed kills. But to get a better sense of the U.S. Tomcat, you really have to consider every skirmish avoided, every conflict that didn't materialize, and every dogfight that wasn't to be. One of the most iconic images of the U.S. Tomcat is playing host and escort to unwanted Soviet Tu-95 Bear reconnaissance aircraft during the Cold War. In an effort to know about U.S. strategy, the Soviets tried to keep a close eye on U.S. naval carrier positions around the globe. And if anything got too close for comfort, F-14s would be scrambled to intercept. Most enemy aircraft were ordered to immediately disengage and run away, just at the mere sight of being painted by the F-14's giant long-range radar. The combination of the F-14 Tomcat and Phoenix missile was the ultimate deterrent. So while for the Iranians, the F-14 was an ultimate fighter, for the Americans, it allowed them to speak softly, but carry a big stick. Many retired U.S. military aircraft are resigned to a life of quiet dignity at davis monthan Air Force Base in Arizona. But most F-14s have been completely destroyed, just so there's no risk of any spare parts falling into Iranian hands. It's believed that F-14s are still in service in Iran, but with spare part shortages, it's hard to imagine they're at top operational readiness. So what exactly is the legacy of the F-14 Tomcat? It has already taken its rightful place as one of the coolest, most capable fighter jets ever to grace the skies, and marked a technological milestone in air superiority fighters. It made fighter jets mainstream and has undoubtedly inspired a generation. So what are your favorite aspects of the F-14 story? And what would you like to see from us in future aviation videos? Let us know in the comments below. And if you like this video, we would be honored to have your subscription. We're 2-Bit Aviation. Thank you for watching.